Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Nick and in today's video, we're going to look at building a sticky add to cart button. What does that mean? It means when you start scrolling on a page, you'll see this appear and it's a call to action with a quantity selector uh, ability to add to cart. And this is something that's becoming more popular in a lot of e-commerce stores, especially on mobile where you know, we have this add to cart call out at the top of the page, but if you scroll down, sometimes product pages can be quite large. So um, once you scroll past that, there's really no call to action anymore for this specific product. So this is a good way to keep it top of mind and hopefully increase those conversions. And you'll see if we add to cart, we get a little animation and then um, a link to the cart itself. So without further ado, let's get started. Now this is, should work on any theme. So the first step that we want to do is to go to our store and we're going to create a duplicate theme to work in. And we're going to go in and edit that code. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the sections directory here, and we're gonna add a new section, and we're gonna call this sticky add to cart.liquid. And now this link is in the description, but it's to the GitHub page with all the code for this entire file. So what I would recommend doing is just coming in here and clicking raw, and you can command or control A and copy the entire code um, and paste it in there at once. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna come in and actually just grab it one piece at a time so that we can talk about it a little bit, just so you know what's going on. So first thing I'm gonna do is copy um, and remove all of this, and I'm just gonna paste in this top style tag here. So not a ton of CSS, but really all it's doing is defining the, um, if I go back here so you can see it, just defining this uh, height and, whoops, height, width, um, you know, the buttons, that sort of thing, and then also making it mobile responsive. So you'll see that in the code here at the bottom, we have some media queries, and that is so that when we go down to mobile, we want to make sure that, that it still looks good there. So after the CSS section, um, we get into the actual HTML or liquid. So I'm going to copy this. And just underneath this, I'm going to paste it here. All right. And then, uh, so this is pretty simple, right? Like we just, where I was just showing you, um, if we look at the bar here, we have the product image, then we have the title, the price, quantity selector, and this is what's going to use I should say this and this add to cart button are what is going to use uh, the JavaScript coming right after this. But uh, the HTML is pretty simple. And you'll see because this is a section, we have access to the product object. Um, so everything like the, uh, the image, the title, the price, et cetera, we have access to those. So now that our CSS and our HTML are put together, we want to actually make it functional. So to do that, we're going to add this JavaScript here. All right, and then I'm going to paste it down here at the bottom and cool. So let's talk about this a little bit. The first thing I'm doing is waiting for this event listener for DOM content loaded. So this is just a good practice that uh, I've been using um, in my Shopify de development for a long time, which is to wait and make sure that the entire DOM has loaded before you start running your JavaScript, because you may have race conditions and things where you are trying to manipulate the DOM, but that DOM element has not been created. So this is just an easy way to make sure, um, wait until everything is loaded and then run my code. So the first thing I do is I create this function called replace HTML, which is um, qu querying this container that we have in our HTML right here. And we're just setting the HTML um, inside of it. So you'll see this is the container here. Now, kind of confusing to see this first place. Why is it there? Basically, I'm using that function to change after I click on this button. I have to change what's in this element. Um, so whether it's successful like here, it's going to show this message. Or if it is a failure, it's going to show an error message. So after that, um, I have a few more query selectors, and this is to grab the data that's in, um, let me refresh, in the quantity uh, selector right here. So this right here, um, that is where it's hooked up and we're getting that value and then listening for those clicks so that we can change the value there to make sure that it is used appropriately on the add to cart button. So um, a little bit further down, this is uh, when the add to cart button is actually clicked. So this is being clicked right now in this code. What we do first is we, I'm calling that replace HTML, where we're putting in a spinner. This is just uh, an SVG so that it shows an indication that something's happening. And then we call this fetch um, API call to Shopify, where we're going to add this uh, variant. And then we're going to add this quantity, which again is what I was just talking about up here, where we're getting it from that value from the quantity box. Um, and then after we make that API call, if it's successful, like I mentioned, we replace the HTML with this success message. And then if it fails, uh, I have another um, message that shows up that's saying uh, there was an error adding this to cart. 
And then lastly, this last section is what we use to determine what the threshold is for when we want our add to cart um, bar to show. So you'll see I have it set um, to where it starts very soon, but maybe you don't want it to start until it's like halfway down the page or something like that. So that is where this is going to um, come into play along with the section I'm going to add right after this, which is the schema, which gives the user the ability to add this in the section um, customizer, or excuse me, in the theme customizer. So lastly, then I'm going to come here and I'm just going to copy the schema tags. And at the very bottom, I'm going to paste that in here. So when we're adding this to the theme customizer, we'll see that we have this sticky add to cart name, and then it takes a number, which is the set scrolling threshold for the add to cart to appear defaults 300 pixels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this and then I'm going to open up the customizer. I'm going to navigate to the products template and then I'm going to click on this add section here and I'm going to add the sticky. There it is. So this is our newly created section. Uh, we have this, um, like I just mentioned, this number that we can set for the threshold, if you want it to appear sooner, if you want it to appear later, I'm just going to set it to, I don't know, 50. And then if we save, and we should be able to preview our theme now. And if I navigate to a product page, and I'm going to hide this little thing, and start scrolling, and bam, there it is. It works just as we expect. If I add to cart, we see it was successful, and we then can view our cart. So this has been creating a sticky um, add to cart button on the product page. Um, this, like I said, this is something you'll see popping up more and more through e-commerce and it makes total sense, have that call to action very visible. Um, this should work on any theme. Uh, it's just creating a section and obviously feel free to customize the styles and things as you please. But I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.